Hi, I'm Sue Mazingo with WebSense Engineering. This short video offers tips for getting the most of WebSense software in your network. Thanks, Sue, and I'm Kay Zimmer with WebSense Engineering. In this video, you'll find out how to use WebSense machine learning for optimal data loss prevention. Machine learning can help you classify and protect information based on examples that you provide to train the system on what's important. It complements and enhances other WebSense detection and classification methods, such as data fingerprinting and predefined policies. In general, machine learning requires two types of examples, positive examples consisting of content that needs to be protected, and negative or counterexamples. The negative examples are documents that are thematically related to the positive set, yet are not meant to be protected. For instance, they could be public patents versus drafts of patent applications, or non-proprietary source code versus proprietary source code. However, since finding a proper set of negative examples may be hard to do, WebSense offers a unique solution through its All Documents option that allows learning from generic examples using the environment as a reference. Let's take a look at how to create a new classifier. In the Triton console, go to the Data Security tab. Under Policy Management, select Content Classifiers, and then Machine Learning. Click New to open the Machine Learning Wizard. Enter a name for your classifier. It should be something meaningful that describes the data, such as engineering source code. Enter a description for the classifier if that's helpful, and click Next. On the Credentials page, select the crawler that you want to scan your examples. Typically, this would be the crawler closest to the root folder containing your data. Enter a user name that has access to the root folder. This must be a user with administrative rights. Read permissions are not sufficient. Then, enter the password for this user. Entering the domain name of this user is optional. Now, enter the root folder or root directory of the files and folders containing the examples that you want to train the system on. Your directory should have a folder with at least two different folders in it. One folder should hold your positive examples, such as the proprietary source code that you want to protect. The other folder should hold your negative examples, such as public source code or this other folder could contain all documents examples or both negative and all documents examples. If you are using all documents examples, the data can consist of various data representing the data in your environment. For best results, each of these folders should have at least 50 files in them. When you're ready, click Next. Now it's time to select your examples. It's most important that you select the best positive examples. Browse to the folder that has examples of data that you want to protect. These files or documents should share some common textual features. Otherwise, the machine learning algorithm won't be able to accurately categorize the data. For content type, select a type that best describes the content you want to protect. This helps the system know how to interpret your data. If none of the content types listed fits the type for your positive examples, select Other. If you select Other, you must provide either negative or all documents examples to help the system better understand your needs. In our example, we'll select Java and C source code. For your negative or counter examples, Browse to a folder containing examples of data that is similar to but does not represent data you want to protect. Select the All Documents option if you have a folder representing all types of company documents. It can contain both positive and negative examples. It's a best practice to provide both negative examples and All Documents examples. When you have completed selecting your examples, click Next. Here's where you tell data security when to run the machine learning process. 
You can run it as soon as you complete this wizard or schedule it to run at a later time. Click Next when done. A summary of this machine learning classifier appears. Click Finish to create the new classifier. The learning process goes through several stages and can take from 5 to 20 minutes depending on the amount of files that you have in your folder. The more files, the longer it takes. Back on the machine learning landing page, you can check progress. If the training for a classifier was successful, its status is completed and the ready for use column is checked. You can now add this classifier to a rule in a policy. The classifier must be in a rule to provide protection against data loss. If your task finished running but it is not ready for use, your status shows as failed. To see details about a classifier that failed training, under More Actions, select Download Machine Learning Report. You may have to add more files to all folders before trying again. We hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.